You might have seen this plane before and might have seen this video before. That's right, it's the 200,000 subscriber special video, and we are going back to the root of where it all began without the deep base. The KR-860. But the story of this legendary aircraft doesn't start in Russia or some spy going over 747 blueprints, but rather at the Paris Air Show in 1999. This was a very special year as aircraft firms were debuting the new latest aircraft designs to tackle the increasing problem of airport congestion. Airports could only take so many aircraft per day, and issued airlines limited slot pairs, a single landing and takeoff per week. Some airports were even full, like New York's JFK and London's Heathrow, resulting in auctions for stunning prices, millions of dollars for airlines for a single slot pair in the world's hottest cities. So how could this problem be solved? Bigger aircraft. Naturally both Boeing and Airbus threw their hats into the ring, with the Boeing 747X and the Airbus A380, both of which you can check out here on the channel. But it's the third contender that is frankly, the coolest. The Suhoi KR-860. Suhoi Design Bureau is more famous for its military fighters and attack aircraft throughout the Cold War and in modern-day Russia. But this wasn't the first time they strayed into the crazy aircraft territory. Having worked before on the somewhat famous T-4 bomber project and less famous, but even more impressive T-4MS. KR stands for Krylia Rossi, which in Angish is Wings of Russia, and the 860 refers to the total amount of passengers this aircraft was built to carry. Which was more than both the Western competitors to boast. The idea was for the plane to come in three variants. The specs listed at the Paris Air Show were bonkers and the real aircraft would be 80 meters long with a wingspan of 88 meters, with the wings folding up to allow access to airport gates much like the Boeing 777X. Compared to a Boeing 747 and Airbus A380, the aircraft was over 12 meters longer than a 747 and 15 meters longer than an A380. So it was positively huge. It would have been powered with either GE engines, Pratt & Whitney, or with eight Kuznetsov NK-93 engines and would have a range of around 15,000 kilometers, 9,321 miles, 8,099 nmi. But not content with just building the next generation Super Jumbo, there were actually three different models of the KR-860 proposed. The first was your standard passenger version that could carry 860 passengers across two levels in three classes, or over 1,000 if the whole aircraft was economy. This 800 figure didn't really take into account today's version of business as back then they never imagined life flatbeds or even entire private suites like onboard the A380. But there still would have been plenty more room onboard for more passengers the second type of aircraft was your standard freighter version. But unlike other designs thrown about in their era it could carry full containers. As in, the containers you see on boats and the back of trains, without being deloaded. There was even a rumor that train cars would be able to be loaded into it without coming off tracks. Wouldn't that be a sight? The third type was a liquid petroleum gas variant, and this is the variant that would have been the most interesting for Russia itself. What bonkers about this design is that the aircraft would have been able to tap the gas, whilst in flight, to power the engines. Technology also researched and experimented on Tupolev Tu-206. This would mean that the plane could effectively fly for free by sipping away on its cargo, but even more importantly for Russia, that it could connect its remote gas fields with the rest of the country or export it because building pipelines in extreme temperatures and terrains can be even more expensive. But if trains on board wasn't nutty enough, we have to talk about its escalators. Yes that's right, escalators, with an S, because there are three.